Hi everyone, I'm Tom. Welcome back to The Path to Carcosa. We are going to be continuing on our journey. If you're just jumping in, then check the description. There should be a playlist with all of the previous scenarios. This is going to be number five, A Phantom of Truth. And there's a fair bit of story to get us started here. Before we get going with any playthrough stuff, uh, check the Klingon subtitles, turn those on. If I've made any mistakes, they'll be corrected there. Thanks, Steve. Remember though, there's a million things in this game bound to forget something along the line. I'm doing it just all by myself. And if you can and you would like to, you can support the channel on Patreon or Ko-fi. It'd be massively appreciated and it's how I'm able to do any of this in the first place. Thank you if you can. So usually at this point I would be turning on Arkham Cards, consolidates all of the various rule books and things. It's just a very convenient way of starting up all of the scenarios, organizing your decks and that. But the app itself has told me, has recommended, if this is your first time, and it might be our first time. I can't remember if I've ever done this scenario before. But if this is your first time, we highly recommend going to the actual campaign log and reading it through that way because it's uh, it's interesting how it's done in there. So we'll be turning on a browser and uh, reading it from here. So first of all, did the king claim its victims? No. So we need to go to intro two. We can have a bit of a picture there. It has been several weeks since the events in the asylum, and you are still no closer to the truth about the King in Yellow and Carcosa. You have scoured the city for signs of the others Daniel had mentioned, the ones who are opening the path to Carcosa, but found nothing. Either the trail has gone cold, or they're no longer in Arkham. Perhaps Daniel truly was insane, and you are only following him deeper down the rabbit hole. Every night you toss and turn as you are subjected to vivid dreams of Carcosa, its black stars, twin suns, shattered moons, and twisted spires. Continue to dream one. Don't get lost. Here we go. You fall through the empty abyss of Hali. Creatures of unknown and impossible origin lurk just beyond the darkness of your sight. The king in yellow, try and trick me, looms above you. Magnificent and yet bound in his prison of madness, manipulating your torturous descent with a soul outstretched arm. Each investigator has earned the lost soul weakness. So going into my deck, check campaign log. If you have more doubt than conviction, test law X, where X is your will. If you have more conviction than doubt, which I think is true, test will X, where X is your law. Hmm, usually our law is a lot higher. So that's going to suck. And as a bit of a refresher of the, the interlude at the end of Scenario 4 last time, uh, we decided that Daniel's warning was something to follow, and we must not speak the name of the King in Yellow, and if we do at any point in a scenario or the setup of a scenario, we have to take a horror. It's trying to trick me because it knows I'm filming it. If I was reading it in my head, it'd be fine. Right, so we've got this. Shuffle that into the deck. Okay. Continue to dream too. And we've got to find it. Here it is. Constance takes your hand and pulls you onto the polished dance floor. Come now, don't be shy. Tonight is a night for dancing, for celebration. Check campaign log. The king did not claim its victims, we know that. If the above is not true, if you intruded on a secret meeting, I don't think we did that. We slayed the monsters at the dinner party, didn't we? So continue to dream four. Here we go. Smoke and embers float upwards into the starless night sky. The screams of burning creatures fill you with a horrid sense of accomplishment. They almost sound human, you consider. But you know that isn't true. Each investigator suffers a mental trauma. Oh, she's got two now. Continue to dream six. She has got seven sanity, so hopefully we'll be all right. The lights of the theatre dim and a spotlight shines on the stage. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, the creature exclaims. Its many tentacles reach across the stage, up into the rafters and throughout the aisles. It tears the curtains down and tattered red cloth falls over its bulbous form. Check campaign log. If police are suspicious of you, I don't think we went to the police, did we? No, we didn't. Continue to dream eight. Just checking my campaign log. Here it is. You peer in the mirror and the stranger peers back at you. His gaze drills into your mind. The mirror shatters. Check campaign log. Are there three or fewer tally marks? No, we got four, didn't we? Continue to dream ten. You chase the stranger up a steep staircase of broken stone, a torrent of rain crashing upon your back as you run. Lightning flashes in the distance. A vortex of swirling black clouds looms above you, threatening to swallow the world whole. The masked man dashes through a wide set of doors atop the stairs, and you follow close behind. The sound of crashing thunder is muffled as the doors close behind you. Looking up, you see a familiar depiction in stained glass. Beautiful, is it not? The stranger says quietly. The investigators must decide. 
how could any of this be beautiful to you or what exactly am I looking at? I don't trust this guy. Dream 11. Uh, you avoid looking at the stained glass. If this vile man considers it to be beautiful, it is probably some trap meant to ensnare your mind. You clench your fist until your knuckles are white and step forward to confront the stranger. Mark a conviction in your campaign log. Well, that's good. That's what we've been going for. Mark a conviction in your campaign log. Continue to dream 13. Daniel's voice calls out to you. They are opening the path to Carcosa. Continue to awakening. You awaken from your fitful dream, sweating and gagging. This cannot go on any longer. You only have one option if you were to continue with your investigation. You must find Nigel Engram, director of The King in Yellow and architect of this madness. Only he will have the answers you seek. You pack your bags and plan your trip to Paris, the city of lights. Check campaign log. Uh, we interviewed everybody, I think. Yes, we did. Continue to Jordan's information. According to Mr. Jordan Perry, who had financed several performances of The King in Yellow across the world, Nigel Engram was an eccentric and impassioned man, almost to the point of mania. Rumour was he hadn't directed any other works since discovering The King in Yellow. Jordan had first met with Mr. Engram at a cafe in Montparnasse. You travel there first, hoping to find Mr. Engram. I remember all that stuff he said now. It was a long time ago when I did that bit. There's been Christmas and stuff since. There's been about a month since Scenario 4 for me. Right, so we want three additional resources. And instead of the normal starting location, each investigator begins play at Montparnasse. Okay, all the setup stuff I skipped ahead to so we'd get all of this uh, stuff out here. I wasn't entirely sure before, but this doesn't seem familiar to me at all. I think the furthest Rach and I have got is Scenario 4, and after we succeeded at it like a year and a half ago, we then went and did a side scenario and our characters just weren't working. I think we'd picked two really investigative people. It was a bad idea. I say that playing now as only one very investigative person. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't think, even when it first came out, and I wasn't really into Arkham Horror, the card game anyway, uh, I don't think we got this far. So we're beginning play at Montparnasse. This area is known for its cafes and bars, and is often frequented by starving artists. Perhaps some of these creative types will become famous someday. Most, you assume, will fade into obscurity. Very Arkham note to start on. So here, two shroud, one clue, and we can discard a card from our hand, gain resources equal to the number of will icons on the discarded card once per round. So the agenda, the first night, as you step off the train in Gare d'Orsay, well, we didn't quite, but I, I know what you mean. The sun sinks below the Paris skyline. You cannot waste any time. If Nigel Engram is somewhere in Paris, you have to find him and wring the answers from him one way or another. While you have more conviction than doubt, that's true. When checking the Doom Threshold, Doom on cards other than the agenda subtract from the total Doom instead of adding to it. Ooh. And then our choices have led us to version two of the first act, the Parisian Conspiracy. You pass the church of St. Barnabé as you exit the train station and cannot help but overhear the organ playing. Is there a sermon this late in the evening? You marvel at the wild and strange chords for a moment before continuing. Paris is a big city and you have very few leads. Objective. Uh, spend the requisite number of clues to advance, but at the end of the round, if there are three or more Doom in play, advance. Okay. Okay then, so starting hand. I've done a mulligan. I got Witten Green in the starting hand and then got rid of the rest. So we've got one of our segments. We've got field work. When you go to a location, if it has a clue on it, you can exhaust it to get uh, plus to your tests. Burning the Midnight Oil, investigate and get some resources. Plan of action to get different icons depending on when in the turn you do it. I think Witten Green we want out. We haven't got a relic yet but we want to be digging through that deck for our usual relics, of course, but also for a new relic. That's one of our actions, isn't it? Witten Green goes out. Perhaps recklessly and stupidly, the Runic Axe are one measly line of defense against the worst scum of Carcosa is gone. We have got something else instead that I'm excited about, but also worried about not having any defense at all, basically. I think we're also going to get field work out. So hopefully there's going to be clues around. So yeah, burning through these resources. And then I'm going to move with my final action, but then we'll get our free investigator. Hopefully there's a clue somewhere. So we can either go to get or say where we were supposed to start, a train station, the gardens of Luxembourg or Notre Dame. Let's have a look in Notre Dame. 
there's, there's some options from there as well. The most famous cathedral in all of Paris and one of the finest examples of Gothic architecture in the world, Notre Dame de Paris, Our Lady of Paris, is an icon of the city. Light shines out from its stained glass windows and you can hear a pipe organ inside blaring a bizarre chaotic melody. So up here we have got a clue. The shroud is higher. Each enemy here gets minus one fight but plus one evade. Test will six. If you succeed, either place a Doom on the agenda or remove a Doom from the agenda once per game. Okay then, so we want to do our free investigate. The Shroud is three, but we've moved to a location with a clue on it, so we get plus two. So we are testing six versus three at the moment. I can't remember what's in the bag. So the amount of Doom in play, minus two, minus four. I think we definitely put some Elder things in, minus three. I think there's that minus four in the bag. So we could commit plan of action. This is during or after the third action, so it would be a question mark and a book. Perhaps overkill. I think I'm just going to go for normal. So we're doing six versus three. And we get, hey, we haven't seen him for a while. The Elder Sign, plus one. And you may move to a connecting location. Hmm. I don't think I want to. I would like a lovely action. But maybe we'll move to several places next time. It's just field work has already kicked in. And my free investigate's already kicked in. So we, we, we didn't use plan of action. We get the clue. Do we want to move? I think I might move back to Montparnasse, but before we do, I need to remember, Wit and Green, so a bit rusty, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine cards, and we're looking for a tome or a relic. So, oh, we found an astounding revelation, so we can discard that for two resources. Lovely. So we're going to be needing them. So a tome or a relic. There's our Eldritch Sophist. Oh, there were a couple of curses on the way. We got another segment, so that's okay. And then the deck gets shuffled, and hopefully those relics rise to the top. Oh, do you know what I'm going to do? And should have done before the test. Luckily, we drew an Elder Sign. I'm going to put... In fact, we've got the resources to put both segments out, because they're fast. So we've got two of our three segments, because they are relics, and Wit and Green gives us plus one will and law when we have a relic out. It's okay, though. Right, so I think that's our turn. A pretty productive turn. Yeah, let's move back to Montparnasse because I think I'll try and investigate here, lower shroud, and then we can move to one of these and do all of you know, field work and everything next time. So monster phase, it's the first round. Uh, and then upkeep, we are back up to three resources and we draw Eureka. If your skill test is successful, draw the top three cards of your deck. Pick one and shuffle your deck. Okay then, so new round, doom on the agenda. And we're racing against three, but we've only got to get one more clue. This could be it. And then our encounter card, Hunted by Bayaki. Revelation test six, evade. Oh dear. I've got four. Oh, plan of action could give us two, but that only gives me zero. Eureka would give me one as well. It's a lot of cards. If you fail, reveal the top X cards of the encounter deck, where X is the amount you failed by. If at least one Bayaki is revealed, choose and draw one. If at least one Omen is revealed, take a horror. But they not always got an evade on it as well, but I'd like to save that. I think at least if we succeed, Eureka will let us draw something. So we are, we've are we got plus one on this. So hopefully something terrible doesn't come out. And we get minus three. So we don't get the benefits of Eureka. But we've only lost by two. So the top two cards are not a Bayaki. And so we they are both omens though. If at least one omen is revealed, take a horror. That's not great, but Witten can take it for us, which is all right. Everything readied up. And yeah, I think that's that's us, isn't it? So in Montparnasse, we are going to burn the midnight oil and investigate. I have four, five versus two, which I think I'm happy with. I haven't got any other cards to not be happy with it. So the skull is X minus X. X is the amount of doom in play. So there's one. So I succeed at that. I get this clue. So we can advance the agenda. I get two resources. And let's, because that might uh, give me some insights as to where to move. Because I want to move and activate all of my stuff and try and draw things. It's going to be great. So if you spent clues to advance, otherwise, oh, I can see horror in that bottom bit. If you spent clues to advance, the organ you heard earlier continues to haunt you. Just been there. No matter where you are, the torturous chords play over and over in your head. The sensation that you are being watched tugs at your mind. Spawn the set-aside organist enemy at the location furthest from all investigators. Hopeless I defied him side face up. Advance to Act 2A. So let's have a look at this guy. So what's, what's the location furthest away? One, two, three. One, two, three. 
one, two, three. I think anything is three away, isn't it? Or actually, no, that's four away. One, two, three, four. Yeah. So we'll go to the canal. Okay, so the organist cannot be damaged, forced. After the organist moves with the hunter keyword, if it's unengaged, resolve its hunter keyword again. The organist cannot attack this phase. Evade three. Okay. Well, if we get our other segment, we can start being able to freely evade people. And to do that, we want to go to the Gardens of Luxembourg. Oh, we should look at the next act first. So our act, Stalked by Shadows. I knew that every time I met him brought him nearer to the accomplishment of his purpose and my fate. And still I tried to save myself. Robert W. Chamber in the court of the dragon, the king in yellow. At fast action, we can spend a clue to either place a doom on the agenda or automatically evade the organist. Group limit once per round. Objective, survive three nights. Okay, so he's a bit far away. So I think then let's go to the Garden of Luxembourg. We've only used one of our actions all that time ago. The gardens of Luxembourg Palace contain hundreds of scattered statues, monuments, and fountains. It would make for a relaxing walk if you hadn't come back here to escape the winged creatures that screech and soar in the dark sky overhead. So there's a clue here. That's good. Three shroud. While a Bayaki enemy is moving, if there is an investigator here, that enemy's location is considered to be connected to the gardens of Luxembourg. Victory point here. Right, let's get that point then. So after I move here, if it's got a clue on it, I can exhaust this for plus two. I'll have my free investigate in a minute. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nearly right. And then we are look. Oh dear. That's a relic. I don't want that though. Well, that makes everything else cost more. I suppose at the top of the deck was like three more weaknesses. So it's it's still good that we've got rid of that. And we've, we've got time, really, haven't we? We've got an action to spend to, to get rid of that if we wanted to. We are going to be moving about a fair bit, though, I think. We want to get our shortcuts out so we can dodge better. Right. So, oh, our free investigator. Okay, yes. So our law is four, five, six, seven versus three. I don't think it really gets much better than that uh, for the chaos bag. The auto fail is always going to be a risk. And we get Elder Sign Volume 2. Oh, and I think I... Oh, no, I don't want to move, do I? Because I want locations to be revealed when I move, when Witten's available, so I can search. Can we pass? Lovely. And I think I'm going to spend a clue, do the ability, to put a Doom on the agenda. Because I want this to advance, then. I want three nights to happen. If things come out with Doom on them, that counts against them. That's bad now. Oh. Right. So, I've got an action left. Shall we get rid of that clasp to make everything else more expensive? Yeah. Go on then. Get rid. And then monsters. So he will actually move two, won't he? But he wouldn't attack if he got close to me. He's a hunter. So next time he'd be able to get to me, but wouldn't be able to attack. So I want to move. I only need to move once next time. No, I really. Next time I probably need to move twice. Okay. Upkeep. Doing well on funds. And hopefully doing well on cards. Eldritch Sophist is uh, not my top priority, but he's the one that's going to keep the pendant going. This should have been in the bag. Whoops. Elder Sign Cheat. I'm having it, though. Uh, right. Yes, I'm happy with that. Mythos, three out of six on the agenda. Oh, and a card. It's nearly ready to get uh, back into my actions then. Torturous Chords. Test Will 5. Oh, dear. My will's not good. Three, four. I could discard the Eldritch Sophist, but I don't think that's a good idea. It's just going to make things cost four, okay. Uh, four, minus one. So three, we failed by two. That could have been a lot worse. So, oh, before you pick it up, put this into play in your threat area with a resource on it for each point you failed by. Each time you play a card, increase the cost of that card by one and remove a resource from Torturous Cards. Torturous Chords. And when it has no resources, remove it. Okay, that could have been a lot worse. And I haven't had to commit anything for it. Like Eldritch Sophies, we still would have lost. And it would have happened once. It's just going to make two things cost one more. Could be worse. Okay, then. So, should we get him out? Yeah, why not? So, our Eldritch Sophies comes out with secrets on him. Still don't think we've got a use for those secrets. But he costs three, four, five. And then we can remove one resource from here. And we are going to... So here's an action. Then we will move to the Gare d'Orsay. 
Built in 1900, this train station was the first urban station in the world to use only electric trains. So this, this is the normal start location. So Shroud of Four, you can spend a resource to move to any rail location. Well, that's going to help evading, isn't it? If you had resources. And the torture record doesn't increase the cost of that. So that's a rail, that's a rail. It's Lamarai rail, yep. Four, five. Oh, there's a lot of locations, isn't there? I wonder if you can do that at all of them. Well, no, you've seen two of them that you can't do it on. Anyway, and so we'll activate Witten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And what do we get? So we've got an Astani Revelation. We'll discard that for two resources, please. <gasps> Our Relic. We can't do more than... Oh, all the segments. Oh, dear. So the new thing that we've got is the red clock this comes out with no charges on it it's our new battery for the segment of onyx well for the pendant when it turns into that the forced after your turn begins you can take all the charges here as resources place a charge here if it has exactly one you get plus four for your next test if it has exactly two you can move up to three times good for evading isn't it and if it has three you may take two additional actions this turn so it's great for like it does great things the first three uh, turns that it charges up then you have to take the resources off it and it charges up again but what if you had someone that could take charges off things and put them onto things you desperately want to keep charges on and then it would keep giving you two extra actions every turn i think the red clock getting that charged up having those moves maybe having all sorts of things up will be very good and we will just have to cross our fingers that the final segment of onyx comes back out at some point and we do have enough for the red clock as well. Leave it in the hand for now, because we've got to do our free investigate. I'll never keep, I'll never take that off, do I? So we have got four, five. Oh, when we move here, six, seven versus four. I'm not committing the red clock to it, so we're just going to have to cross our fingers. Seven versus four. Sorry, Ursula. Oh, dear. That's, oh, minus three. If you fail, lose a resource for every point you failed by. You can see the, the big secret of the, the blue tack that's holding her up. So we get a clue. I'm going to spend it. Let's get a doom on that agenda. Yes, yes, yes. And then we will play the red clock, which is going to cost us three, and that's torturous chords dealt with. And annoying, but could always be a lot worse. Then, that's our action, isn't it? Red clock was the third thing. The organist moves. One, two. Doesn't get to us. So yeah, if I move another one away, he won't be able to attack me, but I'd still need to evade him. So I might want to move twice next time. Okay, so upkeep. Reset all of the things. Doom on the agenda. That's five out of six for day one. And we have Hunting Shadow. You must either spend a clue or take two damage. I think... Well, we can't... <laughs> acting like it's a choice. I haven't got a clue. So two damage. We can only assign one to a Miskatonic ally. And I'd only want to do one anyway. Because I want them to stay alive. That's uh, a condition of our Miskatonic archaeology funding. Where's, uh, what's our guy's name called? Jake. Come on, Jake. I need your help. Could be drawing more cards here. So, our turn starts. At the start of your turn, you may take all the charges as resources. Put a charge here. So we've got exactly one charge. We get plus four for our next skill test. So actually, that would be great, wouldn't it? For evading him at the start. Never mind. So, we've got all of our stuff. We definitely want to move one, so we'll go to the Opera Garnier. The Palais Garnier is an ornate architectural masterpiece and one of the most famous opera houses in the world. Strangely, you find the main doors thrown wide open and a dark mist creeps out from the doorway. So in here we have a Shroud of Five. One clue, while you are investigating the Opera Garnier, double the number of skill icons on cards committed to this test. So make up for its high shroud, but we've got plus four on our first test, so... And I've got no cards in my hand. Actually, Witten can put a card in my hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And it's... Uh, actually, I'd like the man in the pallet mask to come out, because the check marks... Getting the fourth one, doing the silly stuff in the asylum, four was the threshold for something different to happen. I don't know what happened if we hadn't pursued him enough. So we've got an astounding revelation. Oh, I didn't draw a card at the end of last turn, did I? I should have drawn this card, which is Dread Curse. Add five curses to the bag. I'll do that. So it means we drew something else, but it's not a relic or a tome. I just realised that I had no cards in my hand and no resources, which doesn't make any sense. 
Well, that's frustrating because, uh, yeah, we want that last segment in play so we can start evading. We're just not going to be able to activate Witten every time. We might have to spend actions drawing cards. So I've, I've moved, haven't I? Yes. So we'll do our free investigate. So we have got four, five, nine to five already. We don't have to activate this, so I won't. So nine versus five. There is a minus four, but that would be fine. Minus two, that would do. So we've got a clue, but it's not worth spending the clue because that's going to advance anyway. Yeah, we could use it actually to automatically evade him like next round, but that would stop us putting a doom on the agenda. Forget that. Okay, next we will move because it would help not to be in a space with him to the Grand Grignol. The Theatre du Grand Grignol specializes in horror shows of a graphic and sometimes a moral nature. It is among the smallest venues in Paris and one of the most popular. No free investigate here. Forced, after you reveal this, you must either take two horror or shuffle all of your non-weakness cards from your hand into your deck and draw that many cards. Well, can I do that? I shuffle zero in and draw zero? I don't think, I don't think you can make a choice that doesn't affect the game in any way. Which is unfortunate because that's going to be too horror that I'm sure is going to be given to us in some other way. But at least the Eldritch Sophist can take one and I can take my third. And then we've got a clue on here and a shroud of three. Free investigate has gone. So we could either investigate here and have another clue. And it's a victory point. Or we could just draw a card that I'm more tempted by. We can have field work activate. Yeah, let's do it. Four, five, seven versus three. I'll be happy with that. And we get a curse, five versus three. Minus one, that's okay. And the curse is gone. Only four in the bag now. And we've got a clue, but more importantly, a victory point. Okay, so enemy, he is going to land at the opera. And that's it. Upkeep, get everything back. Resource. Card Jake is in our hand for now, but he's gonna come straight out. So when we reveal locations, we'll get to draw a card as well. Hopefully, fill our hand back up. Right, so a doom gets put on here. That makes six. It's the end of the first night. Birds start to chirp eagerly. An orange tint slowly spreads across the sky as the creatures of the night shrink back into the darkness. You spend most of the day resting and the daylight passes quickly, with very little to show for it. Before you are able to fully recover from the previous night's events, it is evening once more. Each investigator disengages from an enemy engaged with them and may move to a connecting location. Move the organist one location away from the nearest investigator. Can I activate all of this stuff? After you reveal a new location, after you move, they're reactions, aren't they? I think I can. You're gonna have to tell me if I can't, but I interpret that I definitely can. So let's move him away prematurely. Okay, so you've heard this district to be vibrant and friendly, but the streets feel unusually lonely to you. So here we can spend a resource, add a supply or ammo token to a card you control. Not bothered about that. Cold rain pelts the street. Every alleyway you pass is another hiding place for something sinister. I won't use field work, but let's use Witten. Or do we not use Witten and wait till we've got Jake? Well, we can still use Jake. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. They don't have to be used on the same reveal. It's just a bit of a waste, isn't it, not using them both? So we're looking for the last segment. That's a relic. And weaknesses. Yeah, would be happy with the pallid man coming out, but he hasn't just yet. We might as well have the free investigates. I've got five versus two as it is. So we've got the skull is the amount of doom in play, which is none right now. So we get that. Yeah, I won't use any other stuff. The second night, the city stirs as cold shadows embrace the streets. There is danger all around you. Danger that you cannot escape. Danger that will follow you to the ends of the earth. When will this waking nightmare end? While well, you have more conviction than doubts, yet the doom on stuff discounts from the progress. We need five doom on that, and after the encounter card, I'm gonna put one right on it. Twisted to his will, if there is no doom in play, twisted to his will, gain search. Fair enough. Spires of Carcosa, attach to your location and then put two doom on the location. Yeah, doom on cards other than the agenda counts against the agenda. So we need to do something about this. You can investigate if you succeed. Instead of discovering clues here, remove doom. So we're gonna to have to spend some of this turn investigating, but that's okay, because we have, you know, been able to move and he's moved back. So that's something. So we'll remember that. And then it's us. So at the start of our turn, we put a charge 
on the red clock. And then we may move up to three times, but we need to stay here now, unfortunately. So I'm going to put the segment of Onyx out. So that costs one and it's fast because that then gets our beautiful pendant out with three charges on it. Now we can move to locations, discover clues at locations or automatically evade enemies at locations that we're not even at. So we could use a charge off that to evade the organist from there and have him basically lose a turn of even moving about towards us because he would get to us, wouldn't he? That seems good because soon we'll... Well, actually, now I could do that. If I wanted the red clock to have two charges again next time, I could charge this up, but I'm not going to. I'm going to automatically evade the organist so he's exhausted and will not get to move any times. I could just keep doing that to him. Oh, wow. That's really overpowered. I wonder if someone in my Discord, hey, join the Patreon, join the Discord if you like, mentioned that uh, a future scenario would make the pendant very powerful indeed. I wonder if this is the one, because I've been worried about not having any attack at all, but it seems okay for now. Touch wood. Right, so I still haven't done an action ever. We want to get Jake out. So that's going to be an action. So we've got five versus two. I think we just need to investigate here, don't we? While we're here. Because he's not going to move now. So five versus two. Minus two is okay. So a doom's gone from there. And then five minus two. Auto fail. Okay. But at least we've got that bit of a reprieve. Okay, so enemy phase. None. Upkeep. Now you're eddies. All my stuff ready. Are we going to get our extra actions now? Oh, this is going to start cooking. I don't know what we're going to do with all these actions if we can just kind of permanently... Other enemies might come out and complicate this, which they haven't so far. So, Doom on the agenda. Oh, you, use your fast action first. Doom on the agenda, don't forget that. Yeah, Mythos phase, Doom on the agenda. And card, Frozen in Fear. Put this into play in your threat area. The first time you've performed one of the following actions each round, it costs an additional action. The end of your turn, test will three. If you succeed, discard Frozen in Fear. Well, that's a bit of a pain. Investigate, at least, isn't one of those actions. Start of my turn. That gets three charges on it. I get two additional actions this turn. So that'll be nice. And then we will use the Eldritch Sophist to put a charge from the Red Clock back on the Pendant of the Queen. And then at the start of next turn, it's going to get three again. That's great. Right. And we'll use a charge to <laughs> evade him there. So we want to just investigate, don't we? We do want to move to a location, but yeah, at the moment it's only one doom, isn't it? Oh, we'll we'll do our action while I'm thinking about it. Spend a clue to put them on there because we did have a bit of a backlog of clues. Five versus two. Oh, I thought that was the other fail then. Three versus two. Minus four. Okay, fail. We've got five actions. <laughs> Investigate. What's that? Uh, minus the doom, which is the four. Okay, that's a fail. You put all this doom in. Okay. I've got nothing to... Have I got nothing to commit? I've, I've not uh, done all the upkeep. Have I? I've straightened the cards. Perception. Should have committed that one at the time, shouldn't I? Because it let me draw another card. Go on then. Commit it now. <laughs> two actions wasted. So, seven versus two. Should have succeeded in the first... Minus three. Would have succeeded without the perception. But it lets us draw another card. Uh, spare wit and green in case we need one. So that doom's gone. We've already done that fast action this time. The doom thing. So only... Now uh, that's a bit of a shame, isn't it? Because it will go to four in the threshold phase. In the mythos phase. And then if I put another one on it, it's not going to matter. So yeah, we've got another couple of rounds before that advances. But he's not moving. So I don't know that I have more to um, tomes or relics that I'm worried about. Can I just stay here and wait him out? Because, like, what's in my deck, apart from many curses? The man in the pallid mask, it would be nice to go and defeat. But right now he would spawn there. But we can make the organist... We can let the organist move in the future and warp to Montparnasse. Yeah, we've already used the pendants. Don't worry, victory points on things. Let's go to somewhere. Let's move to the canal. The underground canal connects the river Seine to the... It's too far away from me. There's, I can't see the zoom. It's the river Seine to the canal de Lork. An old cracked staircase leads down the canal entrance. After you evade an enemy here, move that enemy to a connecting location once per round. Useful. And a victory point. And we haven't had all of our automatic stuff yet, have we? So we've got four, five. Oh, you moved. That takes two actions. So that's the end of your turn after this. 
Five, six, seven. I think we're happy with seven. I don't know why I've put a resource on there instead of a clue. Seven versus four. You could spend Witten. Ooh, but we got a spare one. Let's make sure she doesn't die. Eight versus four, because then it's... Well, actually, there are curses in here still. Minus two. Didn't need to waste that card, but still, that's, that's useful. Keep these clues topped up and victory points. And we will... Yeah, I haven't revealed yet, have I? I haven't, this is the first time I've moved. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. For a tome or a relic, would I wise... Oh, I could have drawn a card. I don't know if I've got more tomes and relics now. This is the point where I don't know if it's worth doing Witten's ability. So then we need to shuffle, and then I'm drawing a card. I suppose it's the same risk as doing it before or after Witten that I'm drawing a weakness. But if I do draw a weakness, that's it out of the way. I just have to deal with them. But one of them is taking a lot of horror, I think. So, plan of action. I'm happy with that. And that's the end of the turn. So, enemies don't get to do anything. He can straighten up. Probably don't need to spend a charge on him next time. Oh, I need to test Will. Three, four. Yeah, I wouldn't have drawn this yet. So, it's just four versus three to see if I stop being frozen in fear. That's minus three. And if you fail, lose a resource for each point you failed by. So that's my resource is gone. But then I would get one back with a card in the upkeep phase. And we get, oh dear, Call of the Unknown. That's the thing that makes us have to go to places and investigate them. But it's kind of what we do. Okay, that's the upkeep. Doom. But hey, it's just what we've got to deal with. Encounter. It's a swift Bayaki. It's got Hunter and it's got Retaliate. When it would move with the Hunter keyword, instead move it until it enters its prey location. But if it moves more than one location, it does not attack this phase. Okay, that's going to make things a bit more of a problem. So at the beginning of my turn, that gets a charge. We get two extra actions. Use the Eldritch Sophist to put the charge back on the Pendant. I'm going to say I'm going to investigate at... Oh, that's not connected. Uh, the Cemetery is where we're going to successfully investigate for that. We're still frozen in fear, unfortunately. We've got the extra actions to deal with that. Do we just evade? I've got four. I could have six evade here versus his two rather than automatically evading him. But I might as well automatically evade him because I'm not going to automatically evade him. I would like him to be a bit further away from... Oh, the man in the pallid mask hasn't come out, though. I'm thinking of the man in the pallid mask going to spawn here. <laughs> it's the furthest away, but he might not come out. Because our fight's won. There's just no chance of fighting. We've got to just evade it. So yeah, let's automatically evade it and leave it here. And, oh, after you evade an enemy here, move it to a connect. It doesn't really matter where it's moved to, does it? If we were staying here, it might matter. But he's going to come to us wherever we are, so I won't worry about that. Okay, so that's that. We'll move to the cemetery. The largest cemetery in Paris and its first garden cemetery, Père Lachaise, is as beautiful as it is haunting. After you successfully investigate Père Lachaise Cemetery, you cannot leave it until the end of the round. Paths of stone wind through rows of graves and countless mausoleums. The dense, twisting cemetery has you trapped in a state of melancholy, surrounded by death on all sides. A victory point and two clues. So it will be a lot of our turn being here, but I think that's okay. So we've spent an action to move. We'll do our automatic investigate. So we've got five... I won't use field work. What else are we going to use it for? Seven versus one. Because it could be a curse and then the minus four, I suppose. Minus one. So we get our clue, but there's no point putting it on the agenda because it's going to advance anyway in the Mythos phase. We can't move, but we can activate Witten and Jake. So let's just draw with Jake. Lost soul. So we have more conviction with doubt. We need to test will X, where X is your law. Okay, so... Our will is four and our law is five. I can commit plan of action, which gives us one. So that's five versus five. That's the best I can do. Oh, moving costs two actions, not one. Uh, skull is minus loads, minus four, the amount of doom in play. If you fail, take two damage. I'm going to have to take that or... Either of these are going to be finished off. We've got four damage, seven health. That's another weakness dealt with. And then Witten can look through the deck. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. But yeah, as I say, I don't know if I've got any more tomes or any more astounding revelations. 
No, I just checked. I haven't got any more tomes or relics, so there's no point. There's no point looking through. You shuffle it anyway. Okay, so you've got all of these actions now. We're looking for the man in the pallid mask. Let's draw a card. I know we're finding other things instead. We've got logical reasoning. Play if you have at least a clue. Oh, choose an investigator at your location. They either heal two horror or discard a terror card. So I could get rid of frozen in fear. Or I could heal two horror. Ooh, I want both. I've got loads of actions. I'm not actually too bothered about that. I'm going to heal two horror. Or actually, I would need to spend an action getting a resource so I could play that. But that's okay. And then we've got one action left. I don't really want my last thing triggering a weakness. But upkeep might trigger a weakness. Get, get a resource. You've got no resources if good stuff does come out. Okay, so we are done. Enemies now, you will activate. You ready in the upkeep phase. Scary. We've got our extra actions. We're going to need them. I'm probably going to have to teleport to Montparnasse, aren't I? So I get a resource and a card. It's not the man in the pallid mask, unfortunately. It's another Eureka. Then Mythos. That's going to be five on the second night, though. To your relief, the sun once again begins to rise, peeking just over the eastern horizon and casting long shadows across the city's streets. You are completely exhausted from the night's events. It feels as though you haven't slept in weeks. Perhaps you haven't. Each investigator disengages from each enemy, engage with them, and may move to a connecting location. Move the organist one location away, and then Jordan Perry is slain. So let's do all of that again. So I am going to move to Le Marais. Organist can move one away. This historic district has recently become less aristocratic, but the old architectural masterwork remains. When your turn begins, if you are in Lemare, draw a card once per round. Throughout this region, you cannot shake the feeling that you are being watched. Something along the rooftops ducks just out of sight each time you peer upward. There are, th I can't remember which three locations now, but th I feel like Lemare was one of them that had um, two possible versions. So there's a clue on there, which I will investigate in a minute. And when my turn starts, I'll be able to draw. And unfortunately, we've got to do Call of the Unknown at the beginning of the turn. So we will... Do Jake's ability and draw a card. It's not the man in the pallid mask. Although we could use no stone on turn to find the man in the pallid mask. Search the top six cards of your deck, draw it and shuffle your deck. Okay. And then we'll do our free investigate. Why not? We have got five, seven versus three. We use uh, field work. Why not? Oh, we need to test this first. At the end of your turn, it would have been four will versus three. Would we get rid of frozen in fear? Nope. Okay, uh, so it's seven versus three for the investigate. Zero. Other way around, please. Okay, all of that good stuff. Then, the third night. On the evening of your third night in Paris, a desperate resolve stirs within you. This cat and mouse game cannot go on any longer. One way or another, this night will end it. While you have more conviction than doubt... Oh, don't read all that out. We've seen that before. Okay. So... Encounter card, nearly my turn. The yellow sign. Test will four. I make my green screen go haywire. It's the sleeve. Uh, so I have got. Oh, if I do plan of action, I've got five will. I've got four will. Uh, but if this test is during but or before the first action, plan of action gains a will. So this is plus two. So I am testing six versus four. And I'll do Eureka. Seven versus four, and if I'm successful, I can search my deck. Didn't work last time. Skull is... Oh, all the doom's just gone. So great, we succeed at that. We don't have to search for a madness. Is the man in the pallid mask a madness? He's not, but here he is. So what's furthest away? One, two. One, two. Two, three. One, two, three. Ged or say is where the man in the pallid mask is. Oh, for, that's a shame. That's a sick shroud. But we can defeat him through investigation. I've just spent most of my cards that let me do that. And there are no more locations left to reveal. And I've taken all the clues off everywhere for fieldwork. Okay, that's going to be a bit of a pain then, isn't it? So now it's my turn. We got our third strike on the clock. Tap you. Recharge the pendants. We get our extra actions. I will say I'm going to investigate Ged or say. So I'm going to do no stone unturned as the first action. Search the top six cards of my deck for something that will help. One, two, three, four, five, six. For something that will help with an investigate test. I do have five. Yeah, I thought that was going to be more. I've got five. 
So this, if I could then get a practiced skill, but I think I've had both the practiced skills. They're the um, plan of action. I think both of them have come out. So you would give me two. You would give me two and let me draw a card if you work. So I think perception is what we'll have. And then shuffle the deck. Oh, actually, I am at Lamore, so should have drawn a card before any of that. It's so cryptic writings. Okay, we'll spend both of them then. That doesn't work after I spend both of them. After you draw it during your turn, play it. Oh, <laughs> no, I can't use it for its symbols. you got to play it to get two resources. <laughs> Suddenly the upside's a downside. Right then, let's teleport with our pendant to Gerdorse. He's aloof, so he's not engaged. We could still try drawing more cards. We've got loads of actions. Let's draw something else. Shortcut. Not really bothered about that. Draw something else. Then we've got two attempts. No stone unturned. I've got two resources, haven't I? Let's... Oh, but if you you draw the cryptic writings, I think was the only thing that had two more books on it. And that would just play itself for resources again. Let's do it. Even if it's something with just one symbol on it. One, two, three, four, five, six. So, yeah, we don't want to draw cryptic writings. Oh, death 30. We haven't got three resources to put death 13 out. Okay, let's just have a practice to make it perfect. Death 13 would be just a an overall plus one, which would be lovely. But it ain't come out. Okay. We are going to investigate the man in the pallid mask. We have we need to be successful for this. Four, five, six, seven, eight versus six. We're crossing everything and we get minus one. That will do. So Call of the Unknown is fine. I've moved to a location as well, I suppose. So I think I should have spent an action for Frozen in Fear. Just in case we'll spend one because I'm feeling good. I've just defeated the man in the pallid mask. And then perception was successful. So we draw a card, burning the midnight oil. But that's it for the turn. Enemy phase. Okay, you haven't been completely clever about this because he's two away. So he won't attack, but he is engaged. And so is the Bayaki. Oh, free action. Put a doom on that. Don't forget that. Okay, could be a problem. Neither of them get to attack yet, but we have got... We've got one free evade, haven't we? So... Hopefully that will be okay, but we won't be able to... Should maybe have just made our way slowly walking over. We'll see. We can get out of this. Right. Oh, Frozen in Fear. I've got... Oh, Shortcut can help me as well if I keep it. I've got four will testing against three. Come on, we failed a million times. Minus three. We're going to keep failing. But I've... I don't really want to spend a load on it because I've got the actions to help me move along. Resource and a card. And the cryptic writings, it's not my turn, so I do get to keep that if I need any investigate. Maybe we'll shuffle and the man in the pallet mask will come out again. Mythos, twisted to his will, there is doom in play. Otherwise, test will X, where X is the amount of doom, which is two. So it is my four will versus two. If you fail this card, two cards. I don't want to. Minus three, I do fail. And after trying so hard to keep it, watch me lose the shortcut now. I feel like there's, there's going to have been a cut because... I wasn't talking over some of the shuffle, it'll look doctored. One, two, and we get the shortcut. Okay, there are not many cards left in the deck. I feel that there's at least one weakness left in there. Right. No, I think we've had them all. Okay, so start of the turn. We've got to say we'll investigate somewhere that isn't the place that I'm at. That gets a charge and we get two extra actions. We do get a free investigation from that, don't we? And we want to be... They're going to be evaded, so they'll not get to move. So we only need to be one away. Or if we say we're going to... Yeah, we're going to... Investigate here, Montparnasse. Because you don't even need actions to get there. So the first evade costs two actions. We're going to evade the Swift Bayaki. I have got... Four to two. We could use Shortcut. I've got actions to keep doing it, though. Four versus two. Minus three. Because it's only the first time you do it. Four versus two. Minus three. <laughs> Four versus two. Minus three would have worked, wouldn't it? Auto fail. And Four versus three. Doom is minus two. So that's okay. I don't know why I'm saying four versus three. It's four versus two. Have I said I failed on ones where I succeeded? Maybe I have. I don't know. But either way, I'm fine with that. The back is evaded. We can charge up the pendant, use the pendant to automatically evade him. And then although it's taken all of our actions, we do have shortcut. So it was worth keeping it. 
So we can go here and then we can draw a card with J. Oh, it's not revealing a location, so no more drawing or anything. I'll spend a clue doing that. I will investigate here, which is... It doesn't have a clue. It's just five versus two, I think. Oh, we've got two tokens there. Minus three, just. So that's okay. And then end of turn, frozen in fear is four versus three. I would like to be rid of it, but it's only one action, isn't it, at a time? Minus three, and I have to lose resource for every point I failed by, so I go back to none. Upkeep. Card. My other Eldritch Sophist. And you guys come back online. Doom. So it could just be two more rounds here. Encounter. I assume these can stack. Frozen in fear. We are double frozen. So I assume the first time we do any of the actions, it's going to cost three actions. Ouch. I don't know if you can have both, actually. I'm, I'm not going to look it up right now, though, because we're nearly over. So in there will still get me evaded. He will come to me no matter what. But he won't get to attack if he has to go more than one location. I have to say I'm going to investigate somewhere. Could just say the cemetery. And I'll just warp there. Because the Bayaki will get to me, but so what? Yeah, I'll investigate the cemetery. Because there's a clue there and a victory point as well. And I get stuck there, but it's okay. So, the... Start of the turn. I will say I'm investigating there. Red clock gets a charge. I get two extra actions. Do the sophist and everything to put a charge back on there. Spend a charge to warp to the cemetery and have our free investigate. So it has got a clue. That takes us two actions though, even though it's a free move. Two actions because of the frozen in fear, I think. And we've got five versus one. So no point committing anything. L signs minus three. Three, so that's okay. Elder Thing, not Elder Sign. Elder Sign would be lovely right about now. Actually, I can't move again, so it doesn't matter, does it? Victory one. Great. All of that stuff's cool. And I've now got three actions to do stuff with. Let's draw cards. I suppose you do take uh, horror if you run out of cards. I've got a shortcut if I need one. And let's get uh, two resources. This could be it. He moves two locations. He just moves until he gets to me. Upkeep, resource, card, there's death 13. And then Mythos, and I think this could be it. The sun rises and dispels the darkness. A warm fog envelops the city, blotting out the sky. If you have more conviction than doubt, which we do, advance to Act 2B. You lose track of yourself within the city as you flee for your life. Your feet move of their own accord. The beating of sinewy wings and screeching of creatures above you spurs you onward. Soon you find yourself running down a narrow avenue, passing a set of heavy iron gates. You are in a dead end, a court with tall old houses on either side. You turn back toward the entrance and breathe a sigh of relief as you see the sun rising once more over the skyline of Paris. As though dispersed by the sunlight, the figure that had been chasing you folds into the shadow and vanishes. Just as you are about to leave, you spot a plaque next to a bread brown door atop a steep narrow staircase. It reads N. Engram. So check campaign log. We didn't intrude on a secret meeting, so we need to go to R1. You can only assume this house belongs to Nigel Engram, the director of The King in Yellow. At last, you have finally found your quarry, and yet it is little relief to your straining sanity. You feel like a dog being led by a leash, your fate decided by a cruel master who has long kept you in the dark. You push these gloomy thoughts to the back of your mind and knock on Mr. Engram's door. There is no response but a flock of magpies that scatter from the rooftop at the sudden noise. You try the doorknob, hoping you won't have to resort to more forceful measures. To your surprise, you find the door unlocked. Inside, Nigel's home is a mess of notes, old books and strange diagrams. Covering the coffee table in his living room is an old faded map bearing many fold creases and tattered edges. It looks to be an incomplete map of the catacombs beneath Paris, or at least a section of it. The food in his pantry is old and rotten. There is no sign of anyone having lived here for years, and yet the ink upon the living room walls is wet and fresh. Over and over, across nearly every inch of the wallpaper, it reads, He is already here. Record in your campaign log that you found Nigel's home. Remove all of the tokens from the bag and put the cloaks back in. And earn XP equal to the victory display, which I think is pretty good here. One, two, three, four. And then proceed to scenario six, the pallid mask. And there we go. So yeah, a bit. it would have been much more of a problem, I think, with more Bayakis. Like two of those get to you anywhere Bayakis. We are decent. Like we've got four of eight, haven't we? 
versus two. And with all of these actions, I think we can get through that. I mean, yeah, it, it puts us massively at risk for fighting, but five actions a turn. Yeah, the red clock is great as it is, but I mean, just being able to loop that three charges thing. Wow. Okay, so that is it for now. I'll see you next week, I hope, with scenario six, the pallid mask, which again, yeah, none of this jumped out at me as familiar at all. I mean, it's possible I could have done it with the, the other way around if you had more doubt than conviction, because the scenario changes if that's true. But yeah, really enjoyed that. Like, it would have been pretty tough, I think, as people that weren't so jumpy around for free. But hey, I am Ursula at the moment, so I am fine with all of that. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. There are hundreds more playthroughs on the channel. There's some more card games. There's some more other Arkham things. There's all sorts of games on this channel. And it's always possible thanks to uh, my patrons. If you would like to join up on Patreon, then there is a link in the description. Get benefits for it. But the main thing, the main benefit is that this keeps existing and these videos happen. Thank you so much if you can. It's how I can do any of it. I will see you next time though. Thank you so much for joining me and uh, yeah, happy gaming until then. Bye.